Now, after Brandon Coleman has been sitting in jail for over 524 days, is it at all possible that this case could be dismissed? Well, I'm gonna tell you why I think this indictment is void on its face because I really can't see how the grand jury foreman could have signed it if he knew what I know about this house. And I'm gonna tell you why I think this house could very well lead to the dismissal of the current charges in this indictment against Brandon Coleman. Well, that is, if somebody in this case brings it to the judge's attention as soon as possible. <laughs> But before I do, I'm also gonna tell you what's in this recent court filing in the courthouse records that seems to indicate that the prosecutor has obtained certain jailhouse surveillance records detailing Brandon Coleman's jailhouse communications. Hi there, I am Professor Blackmore and welcome back to my channel and to my series entitled Powder's House pedophiles. And this new court record includes this media discovery receipt filed on September the 14th, 2023, detailing documents obtained by the prosecutor specifying which of the aforementioned jailhouse surveillance records will be shared with Brandon Coleman's attorney, including, quote, 61 video recordings of jail visits, i.e., of anyone who has visited Brandon Coleman at said jailhouse. 799 audio recordings of Brandon Coleman's jailhouse phone calls and three other PDF documents, including seven pages of Brandon Coleman's jail mail, 9,813 pages of written transcripts of his phone calls and a written log detailing video history, end quote. Now, this video history logs could include videos of Brandon Coleman being videotaped anywhere within the jail facility complex. Now, this media discovery received further details, items not subject to discovery, or in other words, items that will not be shared with Brandon Coleman's attorney, which includes, quote, defendant's criminal history, end quote. Now, I could be wrong, but I've done a little bit of research on this, and I don't believe that Brandon Coleman has a criminal history. So, this could be what I call puffery, i.e., when attorneys just put shit out there to make you think they have something when they really don't have anything. <laughs> and so I see this part as a nothing burger. But, I would be interested to see what they have on these audio jailhouse phone call recordings and the visitation video recordings. But for me, this is all neither here nor there if this case does not meet the statutory requirements that the indictment purports to meet, when in my opinion, it is wholly lacking. And so, just let me lay the foundation for what I mean by going straight to the operative criminal statute. Now, the indictment is based on Texas Penal Code Section 21.02, which is entitled Continuous Sexual Abuse of Young Child or Children, which states, quote, a person commits an offense under this section if, number one, during a period of 30 or more days in duration, the person commits two or more acts of sexual abuse and number two at the time of commission of each of the acts of sexual abuse the actors seven years of age or older and the victim is a child younger than 14 years of age end quote and so i'm going to show you how whether brandon coleman committed the alleged acts or not the basic facts of this case do not meet the strict requirements of the statute now as I've stated on numerous occasions, the defendant, Brandon Coleman, did not live in Ellis County, and it is my understanding that he never had any contacts in Ellis County prior to July 22, 2021. In addition, 
There are only allegations of alleged acts in the indictment that occurred on two dates, that is, July 28, 2021, and August 11, 2021. Additionally, the indictment has never been amended by a superseding indictment adding any other additional occurrences of sexual abuse, and the judge has set the trial of this matter on the only two occurrence events, i.e., July 28, 2021, and August 11, 2021, and this trial is set to begin with jury selection set to take place beginning on November the 6th, 2023. But keep in mind that the trial announcement is also set to take place on October 17, 2023, and I really expect the defense attorney to request a continuance. Now, I could be wrong, but let's see what happens. But if the trial does go forward, the prosecution will be locked into a trial on these facts and allegations made the basis of the alleged two July 28, 2021 and August 11, 2021 occurrences only. And so if it were me, I would force that prosecutor into that trial. So let's take these facts and analyze them against the statute. So again, we only have occurrences that took place on two dates, July 28, 2021 and August 11, 2021. And again, it is my understanding that Brandon Coleman and his family never resided in Ellis County, Texas prior to July 22nd, 2021, because that is the date when they purchased this house, their new home in Ellis County, Texas, never having resided in the county prior to that time, because it is my understanding that they resided in Dallas County, Texas up until that time. And so let's deal with count one of the indictment. And I have no idea in the blessed name of Jesus, how the prosecutor with a straight face could allege to the grand jury pursuant to the strict requirements of the statute that I just read for you, that there was a duration of 30 or more days using the time period beginning June 10, 2021 through August 11, 2021, when Brandon Coleman and his family did not reside in Ellis County, Texas, and never did prior to July 22nd, 2021, which again is the date that they signed the deed of trust supporting the mortgage on the new home and the date when the original owner of the property first signed the general warranty deed deeding the property over to them. They had no ownership rights in the property. They had no way of residing in the property before that time because it was holy and utterly brand new property that had been built on that land and it had never been resided in before. And so I just wonder if the grand jury was aware of this and if the grand jury foreman would have signed off on this indictment had he known of these facts. So first of all, I don't see how you can get a duration of days that begins any time prior to July 22nd, 2021. And that is because I just don't see how Ellis County would have had any jurisdiction over this case prior to that time because the people did not live there. In addition, for the end date of the duration period, the prosecutor is gonna be stuck with the end date of August 11, 2021 because there is no superseding indictment adding any additional occurrence dates after August 11, 2021. And so that leaves you with a duration of 21 days, not 30 days. Now, keep in mind that this wording is in the indictment, i.e. that the acts or occurrences took place during a period of time of 30 or more days in duration between June 10, 2021 and August 11, 2021, for the purpose of meeting the requirements of Texas Penal Code 21.02. But as you can see, it is clearly and blatantly untrue. Notwithstanding the fact that I don't see how the Ellis County prosecutor could ever have jurisdiction over anything that took place in Tarrant County, as it would lead you to believe here, 
No facts have been established within the four corners of this indictment of anything that took place beginning on June 10th, 2021, that could have or possibly have taken place in Tarrant County. And as I have informed you, Texas Penal Code Section 2102 is what we call an AND statute, which means that you must meet each and every element of the statute to prevail, which is again why you see the language of the statute set forth here in the indictment. In other words, it is not what we call an OR statute, which allows the prosecutor to merely establish that he or she can meet the requirements of element one or element two or element three. And so, since you must meet each and every element of section 21.02, I don't see how the prosecutor can establish section 21.02 sub B sub one of the statute because he or she cannot establish that Brandon Coleman committed acts during a period of time that was 30 or more days in duration because based on the bare naked facts of this case, one can only establish that Brandon Coleman was within the purview of the jurisdiction of Ellis County for a duration of only 21 days when the alleged acts, the only two acts alleged, took place. And so, ladies and gentlemen of this church house internet jury, for me, this case should be closed. But let me know what you think and let me know if you agree with this analysis by leaving your comments in the comment section below. And I hope you'll also give me a big thumbs up and I hope you'll also consider donating to this video and my entire channel ministry by donating to the Professor Blackmore.com Cash App. And I hope you'll also subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever I come back with more Potter's House Pedophiles updates. And please also follow me on TikTok and 